Hello everybody, uh, now I will uh, start with this the next part of the principle of solidification processes that is the heterogeneous nucleation process. Last class we have discussed the homogeneous nucleation process and we have calculated the typical energy barrier required to start the nucleation process and what is the critical size of the nucleus that we have already discussed. Now, if we focus on the heterogeneous nucleation process, so therefore, we start with this phenomena that we have already calculated the critical amount of the energy required for the homogeneous nucleation process and we see the how the parameter BFs here that delta G star can be reduced by reducing the interfacial energy. So, interfacial energy means is basically gamma SL. So, somehow if you reduce it then the critical amount of the energy required to start the nucleation process will be reduced okay. and uh, of course, there is other option also. So, delta T by uh, uh, increasing the delta T also, but delta T can be increases up to certain extent. So, therefore, with this principle somehow decreasing the internal, uh, internal energy uh, or uh, sorry interfacial energy gamma S L the interfacial energy then we can uh, reduce the amount of the energy required to start the nucleation process and that is possible if some external agent is available to start the nucleation process. For example, uh, here we can assume that suppose nucleating agent is there and the nucleating agent from there this start the initiation of the nucleation process starts. So, that is why it presence of the nucleating agent and nucleation starts from the nucleating agent then interfacial energy uh, will be reduced basically. So, if interfacial energy is reduced then overall we can reduce the energy required to start the nucleation process delta G star can also be reduced. So, therefore, to look into these things, so we can explain the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, heterogeneous nucleation process this is the foreign particles available here. So, some nucleating it means that some nucleation is available and then nucleation forms over this nucleating agent. So, there is a different media liquid medium is there, solid medium is there, nucleating is. So, three different mediums are there and between these two medium we can define the surface tension pores. So, gamma SL between the solid and liquid, uh, gamma SM between the solid and the nucleating agent and gamma m l between the uh, liquid and the solid agent uh, sorry nucleating agent between these two. And if you look at the force balance also then gamma m l. So, here you can see the gamma m l this the component of the force and gamma s l component it is basically cos theta uh, gamma s l cos theta because this angle weighting angle is theta here we have defined here that is the ang weighting angle theta mm, plus gamma SM. So, gamma ML equal to gamma SM plus gamma SL cos theta. So, this other cos theta can be uh, uh, can be the weighting angle can be decided the what are the surface tension force between the different three different medium. So, that actually decide the what is the weighting angle. So, with this configuration we start the explain the nucleation process. So, here our objective is to uh, estimate the Gibbs free energy associated with the nucleation process. So, initially there is a liquid phase and the nucleating agent is there and between these two gamma ML uh, interfacial energy and gamma SM the interfacial energy between the nucleating agent and the solid uh, um, uh, solid and the nucleating agent. So, we can calculate that what is the initial state 1 Gibbs free energy that that volume volume free energy G V L into the total volume V S plus V L assuming that initially actually there is no solid volume here, but in all are liquid phase and the surface this is the energy surface energy and then surface area associated with the uh, this a dot m L and a m L uh, a dot m L and a m L because in that case we are assuming the projected area that a s m that between the nucleating agent and the uh, uh, the uh, solid particle is same as the between the uh, same area is occupied and the between the liquid and the um, this nucleating agent. So, same projected area. So, that is why we consider these two areas are the same or uh, assuming equal. So, then surface energy in the surface area and the surface energy. So, state 2 it creates some solid nucleus we can say that uh, with the weighting angle theta and the surface tension or the surface energies or I can say surface tension force is acting accordingly 
and then this is an equilibrium agent and based on that we can calculate the state to what is the Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy this is the volume free energy associated with the solid phase, volume free energy associated with the liquid phase, surface free energy one particular surface A M L and surface free energy also gamma uh, M L and the A S L. So, A S L means the surface free energy between the solid and liquid and gamma S M uh, the surface free energy between the, the solid and the nucleating agent and here also we have written the A S M the area S M such that area S M and area M L are the same here. So, once we calculate the total surface energy and total volume free energy, here also total volume free energy, this is the surface free energy. Now, Gibbs free energy change G2 minus G1, we can put G2 minus G1 also here and we can calculate that is the total volume free energy Vs delta Gv and the, these are the surface free energy components are there. Okay. But here we can utilize this expression also relation between the gamma m l equal to gamma s m plus gamma s l cos theta from here we can uh, see that uh, we can write it up and also this is the volume free energy and uh, this is the total surface free energy. Here we can see that further uh, uh, calculation here that uh, uh, this thing um, in, in certain cases we negative because the surface tension is acting in the other direction and to account for this thing this negative terms will come into the picture. This is the volume free energy and this is all surface free energy. Okay. Now, if you look into that delta G can be represented like that change in this thing this is the volume free energy V s delta G V A S L gamma S L that between the uh, solid and liquid phase the and between A S M gamma S M between the solid and the nucleating agent this space and here A S M. A S M and gamma M L. So, gamma M L can be represent the gamma S M plus the, we use this expression here put it same plus gamma S L cos theta. So, further modify this one the expression this is the this is the same term volume free energy volume free energy, but here here also A S L gamma S L that is fine. Now, if we do the manipulation then we can get that A S M gamma S L cos theta such that make the gamma S L as a common and A S L minus A S M cos theta. These are the expression for the delta G. So, this is the Gibbs free energy change associated with the heterogeneous nucleation process. Why I am going much details about the how the derivation can be done, but before that here we can see that if we put it then if you uh, delta G total Gibbs free energy change can be represented finally like that. This is the free energy change associated with the homogeneous nucleation and some theta term will be there S theta. S theta is kind of the we can say the kind of the safe factor kind of this thing because here the cap of the spheri spherical cap it is indicating not the complete spherical like homogeneous nucleation process. So, cap of the spherical uh, sphere is there. So, based on that we can take the account this thing S theta can be the shape factor here and this can be represented like that 2 plus cos theta into 1 minus cos theta square by 4 and definitely it is always less than 1. So, I mean to say that if S theta less, less than 1 because of this part of the sphere then that if this is the homogeneous uh, delta, uh, delta G homogeneous then into less than 1 that means heterogeneous Gibbs free energy change for the heterogeneous nucleation process is always less than that of the homogeneous nucleation process. So, that is why this is the energy barrier critical amount will also be less associated with the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now, if you do the further calculation then we can see that volume of the spherical cap in terms of the theta can be represented and the in terms of the uh, radial distance r, r of the this uh, if we constitute this as a complete sphere and then this is the radius r and angle theta in terms of that we can estimate the volume of the spherical cap is this one pi r cube 2 plus cos theta into 1 minus cos theta square by 3 here theta is the weighting angle. Now, surface area of the spherical cap also represented ASL twice pi r square 1 minus cos theta. Now, this is the surface area of the spherical cap. So, this is the surface area of the spherical cap this surface area this. Now, surface area of the nucleus and the nucleating agent. So, this projected area this area can be calculated like that A s m equal to pi r square sin square theta 
that means pi r square 1 minus cos square theta. This is the expression for this uh, area, this area. So, we can get this area and that area and of course, the, the between the uh, liquid and the nucleating agent, we assume the same projected area is the projected area of this. Now, we can further calculate the delta G equal to minus V s volume free energy and thus we have already calculated gamma S L A S L minus A S M cos theta already calculated this thing. I put these values of the V pi r cube uh, this value cos theta delta G V volume free energy and here also we put the uh, gamma S L is there, but put the area A S L and A S M cos theta then we can get pi r square gamma S L twice minus 2 cos theta minus this value. Okay, just putting this values of the A S L and here we have put the value of the A S M both we are putting here and we are getting this expression. Now, delta G can be calculated like then minus 1 by 3 pi r cube in terms of the cos theta and delta G V and pi r square gamma S L and this can be like that twice minus 3 cos theta plus cos q theta. So, therefore, if we put make this as a common twice minus 3 cos theta plus cos q theta common both the side and then we are getting the heter now head uh, gives energy change for the heterogeneous nucleation minus 4 by 3 pi r cube delta G B plus 4 plus gamma S L into this shape factor. So, this is basically S theta. So, I can say that this is correspond to the homogeneous nucleation process the homogeneous delta G H O M homogeneous nucleation process and this can be further simplified in terms of this parameter this value. So, this is equivalent to the 2 plus cos theta into 1 minus cos theta square divided by 4. So, this is the shape factor here. So, this of the we can simply calculate in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process in terms of the shape factor uh, as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process. If S theta this factor is is always less than 1. So, therefore, heterogeneous nucleation Gibbs energy change will always be less than that of the homogeneous nucleation process. Now, further analyze this calculation. So, therefore, uh, this is the calculation we can say that. Now, the we can represent the uh, in general way both the for the nucleation types whether it is homogeneous or, or heterogeneous nucleation process we can we can ex, uh, see that delta G star critical values of the free energy change irrespective of the whether homogeneous or heterogeneous nucleation process can be represented the half of V star the volume corresponds to the uh, critical size of the nucleus and delta G V the volume free energy. Now, V represent V star represent the volume of the critical radius it can be either sphere or it can be the spherical cap also associated with the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now, we can check whether this expression is ok. Therefore, for heterogeneous nucleation process we can we can see that for heterogeneous nucleation process we can perform the similar exercise once we calculate uh, just I am just coming back to this other point when you calculate the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, here we can see that heterogeneous nucleation process is calculated this is the homogeneous nucleation in terms of the r and the theta. So, homogeneous, but for homogeneous nucleation process we can calculate the critical radius of the r star. So, critical radius of the uh, nucleation, but critical size of the nucleus is independent of the shape factor. I mean to say that if we perform the similar exercise because this shape factor is not associated with any kind of the uh, this uh, it is not a function of the r here explicitly. So, therefore, this is the function of r. So, if we perform the the try to find out the optimum point also here. So, uh, in this case if we for the do the first derivative make it equal to 0 then from there you can get the relation of uh, r star critical rise. So, it is independent of the shape factor s theta. So, I mean to say that for homogeneous nucleation process and heterogeneous nucleation both the cases the critical size of the nucleus will be the same, but critical values of the energy barrier will should be different in these two cases. I am just uh, we, later on we, we can see that how the, the Gibbs energy change uh, vary with respect to the critical size of the nucleus in both the homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation process. So, in this case the critical size of the nucleus is same as like with the homogeneous nucleation process. So, R star is the same and V s that is volume of the spherical cap we already have seen this volume of the spherical cap in terms of the theta and R this is the very cap and if we put it then V star equal to 4 by 3 pi R cube equal to 4 by 3 
uh, sorry uh, here already given pi v s equal to pi r square into this expression, but here we just replace r in terms of the r star put the r star's value then it, it becomes here pi r cube that means r star here and the cos theta term will be there. So, therefore, if you do the delta g half of v star into delta g v, so 4 by 3 this uh, v star and into uh, delta g v will be there uh, because another delta g v will be cancelled with respect to each other cube and this terms. Um, then it, we, this is the expression for the, the, the critical energy barrier associated with the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, now if we perform the similar way also for the homogeneous nucleation process r star is the uh, this one the same value twice gamma SL by delta G V and in this case volume of the solid complete sphere because homogeneous nucleation process we have the complete sphere. So, here the volume equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, put this value 4 by 3 in, in here place r star then we are getting this is the value of the critical values of the uh, Gibbs uh, the uh, Gibbs free energy uh, energy chain associated with the critical size of the nucleus. So, here I can prove that that delta G V star critical size of the nucleus in the half of the V star into delta G V. In general irrespective of whether it is homogeneous nucleation process or whether it is the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now, you can do further analysis also. Here you can see that uh, just I am just trying to compare between the, the behavior in, uh, in homogeneous nucleation process and heterogeneous nucleation process. So, here uh, in homogeneous nucleation process we can see that critical value for the nucleation process is it follow this curve R star curve is follow like that ok and uh, sorry here it is showing the in terms of the uh, delta G star and heterogeneous nucleation process uh, this is the it is lower than that because in heterogeneous nucleation the critical values of the the free energy change is always lesser than of the heterogeneous homogeneous nucleation process. So, that is why this is heterogeneous and this for the homogeneous nucleation process and critical size of the nucleus is same irrespective of whether it is homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation process. So, therefore, suppose this is the critical value for the nucleation process. Now, correspondingly this is the the CP plot the n and the delta t and the that means uh, delta t is the degree of undercooling. So, therefore, we can see that this is the heterogeneous nucleus, this is the amount of the degree of undercooling is required for the heterogeneous nucleation process and it is we have ob already observed this is a very sensitive to the change of the delta t in the rate of the nucleation process. So, it is the heterogeneous in case of the homogeneous. So, here the delta t requirement is much more, here delta t requirement will be much less. So, what we can observe that, uh, that this is the in homogeneous nucleus, this is the critical size of the nucleation and critical size of the energy barrier equal in case of the heterogeneous nucleus, this is equal to this. But if S theta equal to 1 or the different values can be we can plot it uh, in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. And what we observe that the homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation process, the degree of undercooling is the is basically the more actually the most important driving force in homogeneous nucleation process, but in heterogeneous nucleation process degree of undercooling requirement is less. Here the heterogeneous nucleation process the initiation of the nucleation is the by reducing the surface energy because of the availability of the some active elements present to start the nucleation process in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, that is why here delta is very less requirement is very less delta t, uh, but here requirement of the delta t is much more in case of the homogeneous nucleation process. Now, if we try to understand the delta g and with respect to t time that homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation process here you can see that this curve for the delta G homogeneous nucleation process and the second curve is the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, definitely the critical size of the nucleus is the both the cases is the same R star, but the amount of the energy required the in this case this is the amount of the energy required for the heterogeneous is less as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process. So, there here you can see the delta G star homogeneous and this is the only the heterogeneous nucleation process energy variant. That means, to start the nucleation process is less amount of the energy is required in case of the heterogeneous as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process. Although, their critical size of the nucleus is the same because it does not depend on the weighting angle theta. 
Now we can do we can just observe some exercise here because if theta equal to 10 degree in case of the in that cases s theta can be very small 10 to the power minus 4. If theta equal to 30 degree then s theta can be 0 0.02. So, that means that that we can simply here we can put that uh, at compared to the homogeneous nucleation process what is the energy barrier required just to vary with respect to the weighting angle theta and that weighting angle theta entirely depends on the surface condition for the nucleating agent and then and the state of the liquid and the temperature state of the liquid and based on that and particular the surface energy associated with the solid phase of this particular material. So, all this matter can decide the weighting angle uh, during the heterogeneous nucleation process, but we observe that if theta equal to 0 degree this model does not work uh, for heterogeneous. So, it can be uh, it works if theta actually greater than 0 degree. Now, similar kind of the we can see the heterogeneous nucleation process here the number of nuclei we can we can say that uh, n 1 into exponential delta g minus delta g heterogeneous the delta g tar the energy change associated with the heterogeneous nucleus process divided by k t. So, here n 1 is the number of atoms in contact with the nucleating agent. So, number of atoms in contact with the nucleating agent that is the dis, that is the uh, that is the n 1 in this in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. Actually, we are explaining the similar way the number of nuclei or the volume rate of the heterogeneous nucleation the similar way what we have explained in case of the homogeneous nucleation process. So, therefore, volume rate of the heterogeneous nucleation process can be expressed as F 1 C 1 into exponential uh, this is the value. So, here C 1 is the number of atoms in contact with the nucleating agent, sur agent surface and the per unit volume that is the indication of the C 1 and F 1 is the frequency factor the how frequently the atoms are added to the nucleating uh, agent uh, that is the that is decided uh, that is defined by the frequency term here. So, I believe this can be some negative sign will be there. So, therefore, and uh, if we as uh, if we try to understand the different way the heterogeneous nucleation process it suppose we can take an example also because some pre the nucleation starts from some pre existing surface here. So, normally mold wall is macroscopically we understand macros macroscopically it same as it is flat, but if you see the any kind of the mold wall microscopically it is not exactly flat may be some kind of the micro microscopic cracks might be there in the in a mold wall. So, that will start the nucleation process will start for example, this is the mold wall and some crack or opening is there associated from nucleation start from this point also ok and uh, it depends on the opening size of the particular crack on the surface. So, therefore, nucleation in cracks occurs with very less undercooling. So, we already observed that degree of undercooling requirement the start in this case will be much less in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, therefore, in very low amount of the degree of undercooling the nucleation might be starting. So, it depends on the pre existing surface condition. So, therefore, for cracks to be effective to start the nucleation process. So, therefore, this its crack opening should be large enough to allow the solid to grow within this crack and, and of course, it must be cover up that at least the critical size of the nucleus. So, until unless it is not reaching the critical size of the nucleus, then it may not the nucleation process will not start. So, that kind of the space or maybe size should be available there to start the nucleation process and that is the at the in the at the solid liquid interface and of course, uh, to grow without the radius then the below the R star is very difficult here uh, in can but R star some this it should be greater than uh, the size opening can be greater than R star such that it can accommodate the minimum size of the uh, uh, critical size of the nucleus so that nucleation may start on the crack opening. So, these are just to understand that in, in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process it starts from the pre existing surface, but in homogeneous nucleation process we understand suppose the, this is the liquid, but without any interface the just to driving force the de high degree of undercooling start the nucleation process in between and randomly. And a, in this cases there is no need of the any kind of the pre existing surface, but more practical the solidification normally starts from the wall actually 
I mean to say that it starts from the homogeneous nucleation process and some part of this uh, liquid container the nucleation can start in the form of a homogeneous nucleation process. But in principle the homogeneous nucleation process the high degree of undercooling is required as compared to the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now, I can do further analysis of the heterogeneous nucleation process because heterogeneous nucleation process the it is often enhanced by the addition of the nucleating agent. So, basically we can start some nucleating agent can be added during the solidification process okay, such that the nucleating agent start the initiation of the nucleation and in, in a, in a uh, and that is termed as the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, therefore, the nucleating agent can be solid compound or can act as a site for the nucleation process. It can be the any solid component and that acts as a site for the nucleation process. So, therefore, effectiveness of the nucleating agent depends upon the weighting angle and the surface roughness of course, this particular the inoculating agent their surface condition actually decides the what can be the weighting angle and uh, along with the uh, if weighting angle and then accordingly weighting angle only decide the amount of the critical energy of the uh, nucleation process, but it cannot decide the um, this uh, critical size of the nucleus. So, we remember these things that is the role of the weighting angle the surface condition. Now, if when the nucleation during the solidification definitely requires some undercooling. So, some melting invariably occurs the equilibrium temperature even at relatively high rate of the heating. It means that that we here we are trying to explain the uh, nucleation occurs that the from liquid phase to solid phase and during this uh, transformation from liquid phase to solid phase that we are telling this as the uh, uh, the solidification occurs the formation of the nucleation process. So, therefore, this in this nucleation process from solid phase to uh, nucle uh, uh, liquid phase to the solid phase. So, then surface energies is uh, might be having certain surface energy. So, gamma S L between the changing of the surface energy. Similarly, it may possible that liquid phase can transform to the next phase the vapor phase also or other way vapor can be condensed to the liquid also. So, there also it is associated with some surface energy, but if it is possible to convert directly from the solid phase to the vapor phase or other way also vapor phase to the solid phase. Then in that case the surface energy will be much more directly transformation from the solid phase to the vapor or vapor phase to the solid phase as compared to the other phase. So, that is why it is always found that gamma S L plus gamma L V that means between the solid and the liquid phase and between the liquid and the vapor phase summation of the two will be always less than that of the between the solid and the vapor phase. So, it means that when I am trying to converting the liquid phase to the solid phase, then to maintain the uh, uh, liquid phase also it needs some amount of the superheating the above the melting point temperature. So, when the some superheating may exist in these cases and then superheating uh, once from the superheat temperature to exactly melting point temperature then the solidification actually starts through the formation of the nucleation. But in case of the other way or when directly converting to the one phase to uh, solid phase to the vapor phase then super it may not be required directly transformation from that phase to uh, that liquid phase to vapor phase or other as solid phase to vapor or vapor phase to the solid phase without uh, super heating. So, in that case the weighting angle uh, can be 0 uh, in that case there is no weighting angle is not involved in this particular case. So, this is just a another lateral understanding associated with the uh, nucleation process in case of the uh, pure metal in this case. So, that is all uh, uh, for this particular uh, sub topic. So, here I have tried to explain the, the expression for the heterogeneous nucleation process how to calculate the energy barrier in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process and what is the critical size of the nucleus and what is the uh, how we can identify the role of the degree of undercooling and the safe factor in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. That is all for today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.